Well, good afternoon, everybody. For those of you who don't know me, I'm Brendan Sims. I'm the director of the Center for Geopolitics. Um, it's a great honor to welcome to Cambridge and, of course, to the uh, Union, uh, the Prime Minister of Montenegro, uh, Dr. Dritan Abasovic. Uh, he is a political scientist who served as an assistant at the Faculty of Political Science at the University of Sarajevo. He then moved into politics in his native Montenegro. Uh, he rose very quickly, becoming president of the United Reform Action Party. Then he became deputy uh, prime minister, and now, of course, prime minister since uh, 2022, one of the youngest uh, such figures uh, in the world. Now, we're going to have uh, a, a conversation, a discussion, uh, for about half an hour or so, uh, and then uh, I'm going to open up uh, for audience participation uh, and questions. So let me start, uh, if I may, uh, Prime Minister, with a somewhat general, perhaps a naive question. Um, yours is a small country. Um, there are many people, I think, here who don't know a great deal about Montenegro. So could you begin, perhaps, by characterising your country and telling us a little bit also about your plans and your ambitions for Montenegro. Uh, thank you very much, Professor Sims. In the beginning, for me, it's a great pleasure to be here today. Thank you, everybody, for, for coming. Education is the light, so you are really privileged to have the possibility to be educated here in Cambridge. And for us, it's the privilege to have possibility to make a discussion. I will try to answer in the question. In the way, maybe you don't know too much about Montenegro. Montenegro is the smallest country by population in the Western Balkans. It's a country with 600,000 people, but it's really amazing. It's really amazing, not because I want to make the commerce of one country, but you can check it and everybody who visit Montenegro fall in love with Montenegro. Montenegro is the specific from some sense, and I want to, to, to underline that. First of all, that is the country which in problematic Western Balkan areas don't have the problem with the neighbors, which is very good. And uh, security aspects, especially because we are a lot of depend from tourism, it's very high. Fortunately, it's, it's, it's very high. Second thing, Montenegro is the only country in the world which is in constitution dedicated like ecological state. It's true that our behavior in the context of the promotion of the green policy and protecting of environment can be better, it's true. But it's still country when you can drink the water from the river in the north of the Montenegro. So I think that is much more important for this another thing, which I don't want to say this is unimportant behavior of the people, and I think that that will be fixed, but we need to protect uh, our environment. Third thing, it's a multicultural country uh, with a lot of nationality who are living there. Time by time we have some, let's say, political problems, but I think that in this last period we are uh, managing that pretty well and making the one civic concept uh, which uh, it's uh, something what we want to see in the future. And for the last thing, I think that uh, Montenegro is the country who is the front runner in EU integration. And from my point of view, I really believe in that, it's the first next member state of EU. If enlargement process uh, alive somehow in the EU, because this is the two-way street, I think that Montenegro is the country which first will come to the, to, the, to the final goal. I wish this also to another country, to our neighbor, but I think that we have the better, better possibility. Is the country very exciting? Is the country of sun, of fun, of lot of smiles, with some internal challenges? But uh, for the foreigners and the, for the visitors, I think that this country, which uh, people really love to see. So next time when you uh, have the, you know, some preference about when you want to go for the vacation, don't miss Montenegro. <laughs> Thank you very much. That's an excellent introduction. Uh, and you've touched on several themes that I think we'll come back to. Now, one of the signature uh, aspects, I think, of your uh, politics, but also of Montenegro in general, is uh, the environmental issue, which you've, you've mentioned. And I wondered, 
Could you tell us a little bit more about how this has come to be so salient in your view, worldview, but also in, in Montenegro more generally? Because as I understand it, Montenegro has actually been quite far ahead, not only for the region, but actually more generally in its commitment, even at a constitutional level, uh, to the environmental question. Can you elaborate a bit on that? So we are also surprised that people in 1992 decide when they write the constitution, uh, put this important thing in the, in, the, in the paper because we really have the very nice landscapes and uh, environments, it's really un unbelievable. A lot of people, when they hear Montenegro, they think that it's somewhere in the South America or in some mm -hmm. other areas in the, in the world, but it is in the middle of Europe. I think that uh, we need to use this better in the context that this can be our comparative advantage in comparison with every single country. So ambition of the government is to uh, create the green destination. Create the green destination. It's not always easy because that is um, still problem with the rule of law inside of country. Uh, we um, are specific also from another thing which is not so, so positive in democratic level. Our parliamentarian life starting in 1905. But uh, since 2020, we never changed the government in the election. So in the last two years and a half, we finally leave the democratic, democratic uh, values. I don't want to say that before was a lot of problems, but it was not the changes. Now uh, people finally understand that uh, they really can make the change. They, can, uh, they have the sovereignty to decide who will be on the power. And uh, this creates the situation that uh, system is functional in the way that everybody is important. So it's important small parties, big parties, uh, parties with a lot of seats, with, small, with some seats in the parliament, everybody is important. So this is the new, new approach. Why I mention this? Because without understanding of democratic values, we cannot come to the situation to talk about the environment. Because the questions which are dedicated also with the corruption are connected with the environment. Destroying of the environment is connected with the financial interests of the some, some group. And I think that it uh, doesn't matter who will be on the, on the power. I'm coming for the, from the Green Party. I think I am only Green Prime Minister in the world. Uh, but that party is not so big, but that is the circumstances now in, 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 in Montenegro. I think that every government also in the future should have this component like a top priority. Because this is the way how we can make, how we can brand the destination. It's very important to brand the destination. More and more people around the world looking for the, for the clear environment, looking for something very, very authentic. A lot of visitors, tourists want to have something which don't have in, in, in oven, oven countries. And I think that this is something what we need to use. It will be very hard in the challenging of the, of the development, especially of the construction and everything of the big projects, of this energy crisis which is, which is around, around the globe, especially in the Europe. It will be problematic, but uh, from my point of view, uh, if we have something what we can consider uh, like a minimum consensus, an overlapping consensus in the country is this, economic, uh, uh, in this ecological aspect. Why? You will always have in the political spectrum parties or groups who are left or right or in the center or uh, more nationalistic or more liberal. This is something which we will not change. But I think that the question of environment always can bring together. And uh, experience of my government, it's like that. So for the questions which are connected with the environment, it's easy to bring people together even if they have different political ideology, different political views. So everybody or almost everybody looking for something which is clean water, uh, not, not, not pollution, uh, to, to, to protect the rivers, to protect the lakes. So a lot of people looking for that. So I think that uh, we need to use this uh, situation, which uh, Professor mentioned, that this is like a trend, everybody in the, in the globe, and to, to uh, make uh, Montenegro like a credible green destination for visitors, but also for the people who decide to live there. 
Now, you spoke just now about the connection between environmental difficulties and corruption. Uh, and that, of course, is a very, uh, brings us to a very important issue in Montenegro, uh, certainly in its recent history, um, in the sense that many people, if they'd heard about Montenegro in the news, a lot of it had to do actually with corruption. And the, the perception was of Montenegro, I'm talking now the 1990s and perhaps the early 2000s, as a place where you had a lot of smuggling, cigarettes and, and so on, as, as you're well aware. How have you uh, tried to get to grips with this problem, which is obviously a barrier in, in your journey towards Europe? So, uh, I am the most proud on the result in fighting against corruption and organized crime. Uh, I was deputy prime minister for one year and a half. After that, the prime minister, this is from 2020. And uh, I was responsible for the security sector when I was the deputy prime minister. And I, I want to share with you some information which maybe you don't know, but people in Montenegro some, sometimes don't have the clean information that uh, we make something which is... Uh, big in comparison with every European country. So after 30 years of the almost same government, it was a lot of politicization of institution. And after uh, we finished the wars in the former Yugoslavia, fortunately, we don't have the wars in our territory, but we was politics was involved in this or that, that, that way. After that, we have a lot of problems with the, with the criminal groups, and we still have that. Unfortunately, still have that. The two main things was the smuggling of the cigarettes, which is connected all, also with, uh, believe or not, with the UK, because the, uh, around 25% uh, of all smuggling cigarettes in the European Union and UK uh, pass through Montenegro. So we are just uh, one, one place when they, cigarettes come from the different countries, from the Middle East or from Africa, in our main port, and after that distributed in another, another countries. And I want to say that uh, in the beginning of May of 2022, 20, when I come to the office, one of the first action was that we have the biggest action against smuggling of cigarettes in Europe ever. We catch 148,000 package in one single action. And that is the most in the Europe ever. And with that, we destroy the smuggling of cigarettes, which was the business, uh, which is approximately 500 million a year. If we count that with the 20 year, okay, we cannot say 500 millions, but maybe less, but it's the billions of euros which go not in the pocket of the ordinary people of the state, but in the pocket of the, of the, of the criminals. And this was the uh, really huge success for us. After that, we start to do that uh, with the smugglers of the, of the cocaine, you know the Balkan clans, different kind of organized criminal groups, are very active everywhere in the in the Europe, and uh, probably some people which don't find themselves like a smugglers of cigarettes, or they don't think that that is enough money for them, they starting to smuggling the cocaine. So we make a lot of action in the previous period against them, and I think that this, that is most dangerous part of 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 my job and job of the, my colleagues. Of course, I want to underline that it was impossible to do that without international cooperation. And I want to underline the rule of uh, Europol in all these things, because Europol in one moment when they, these groups make a lot of problems inside of EU, decide to open this application, which we calling Sky L LCC, that is the application like every other, like WhatsApp. And uh, when they open that, that application and giving, providing the information also to our authorities and to our police, 
we are starting the big action in, inside of our country. Why I want to underline this, and thank you, Professor, for, for this question, because I strongly believe, I strongly believe, and I, I am so convinced in this, that uh, all these things which are connected with, uh, with the criminal activities are strongly connected with the political, political things. So that criminals who have a lot of money, they make the, make the open opinion makers, buying the media, creating the different kind of problems. And my thesis is, which I promote everywhere and I want to repeat here, it's that in Western Balkan, behind the nationalism, it's corruption. Mm -hmm. This is my thesis. Behind the nationalism in the Western Balkan, there is a lot of nationalism, people fighting, you know, Serbs, Montenegri, and Albanians, Bosnians, this religious group, they, they fight. I truly believe, and I everywhere staying behind this thesis, that behind the nationalism is corruption. Fight corruption, we will fight nationalism. Only people who promote nationalism are the people who want to keep all the area of Western Balkan in status quo. Only people who are connected with the criminal activities, they want status quo. All another people, ordinary people, they want to see the progress. Only political groups which don't want to, to, have, the, to have the independent institution, professional institution, are people who have politicians who have the problem with law. All another rational people want to see institutions which are more professional, better, more, more, more productive, more, 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 more effective. So I am really proud. I am not proud because our country is recognized like problematic in this aspect, but uh, definitely uh, Montenegro showed the very, very big steps forward in the context of the fighting against organized crime, sometimes with misunderstanding of international community. And this is important for the students. These are also students maybe who, who are studying the law. Uh, when we, uh, we have the problem with the, with the Office of Special Prosecutor, which is responsible for fighting against organized crime, and we want to change the law in the way to make the refreshing of institution. And the only group who was struggling against that was European Union. And we have a lot of hundreds of meetings with me in that time that they say, no, you are now new in the power, you want to make the, create the revanchism uh, against the people from the previous system, which is not true. And after that, with a lot of problems, we changed that law. Uh, bring new people in the, in the, in the prosecutor office, deliver the results, and same people who criticize in that from European Union come and say, congratulations, you make the very, very good thing. We didn't know that these people was protector of the criminals in, 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 in Montenegro. So just to understand, I, I'm, I, I'm saying this not because of Montenegro, but just to, in theoretically to, to understand that also democratic values, also democratic lives, it's the relative in different countries. Something what, is, uh, what we can apply in, in Estonia, maybe we cannot apply in Montenegro. Or something which is law, which is very good and productive in Italy, or I don't know, in, in Portugal, maybe it's not something which is good for Bulgaria or, 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 or for North Macedonia. This is. So uh, just to conclude, I think that we are on right right track, but this is very, very complicated and most dangerous part of the of the of the of the job. But also it's our duty. Also it's our duty. And I think that if we want to have the economical progress, if we want to have all more focus on environment of everything, first of all, we need to have the the, the very good result in rule of law. After that, I think the investition and the investment and everything else will come uh, when you make the system which is, which is uh, um, good and when it's very predictable in the, in the context of norms. Thank you. So just uh, for information, we started a quarter of an hour late, so I'm going to go on with questions for another 15 minutes and then we'll switch. 
uh, to audience participation. Um, so you've said a great deal um, uh, about the, the recent past, about the divisions uh, in the Western Balkans, which of course to a certain extent also affected Montenegro. Um, and yet in some ways you're, if I may say so, uh, you appear to be a living uh, refutation of the inevitability of that conflict. Mm -hmm. Because, I mean, you're the first ethnic Albanian and Muslim prime minister of Montenegro. Um, at the same time, your name, um, to me, sounds Slavic, Abasevich. Um, and if it's not too impertinent a question, can, can you tell us a little bit about your own identity, uh, what your name, your naming means in this context, mm. um, and, and how it's perhaps evolved? I am a I am person who is with an Albanian background, but uh, I just want to, to underline that uh, I, I really promote the civic politics and have some cosmopolitan views, which is not very familiar in Western Balkans. So this is what's happened to have the, somebody from minority like a prime minister of Montenegro. It's something which, which maybe two years ago, everybody will say that that is the science fiction. Hmm. So nobody believe in that. So uh, my message is not because because I'm talking about my, myself and I don't feel so comfortable about that, but uh, just you need to believe in your own ideas and nothing is impossible. So if you ask somebody from Montenegro three years ago, nobody will say that somebody from minority, doesn't matter, Albanians, Bosnia, Croats, I don't know, um, somebody else will become the prime minister. But if you really work hard and spend the energy in promotion of your ideas, you can come to the success. This is, 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 this is the message. Um, yes, it's true that uh, there was a lot of um, surnames which are in communistic period, you know, make this Slavic, uh, um, Slavic meaning. Mm -hmm. But uh, my answer on that is that uh, name is nothing if you don't have some uh, values mm -hmm. and if you don't make something good. So if you are a bad person, you can have the best name in the world and that is nothing. Mm -hmm. Or if you are a good person, who cares what is your name? This is my, 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 this is my, let's say, my, my understanding of, of this. I really try to promote the individual right to uh, be the prime minister of over every single citizen of Montenegro. Mm -hmm. I really don't care who is the Montenegrin, Serbian, Albanian or Bosniaks, who is Orthodox in our country, who is Muslim, who is agnostic, who is atheist. For me, this is not important thing. Mm. For me, it's important only to everybody respect the constitution, to respect the laws, and everybody to have the equal rights in the in the way with the institution. This is mm -hmm. nothing else. This is my politics, and I think that this politics is the future of the Western Balkan if we want to be successful. Mm. If we want to be unsuccessful, we can just. Uh, stay on this, uh, let's say, political conflict, which when we want to promote just our groups, our communities, or our, our, our specificity. So one identity don't, uh, don't uh, destroy another. Mm -hmm. We, like a persons, have the many identities, mm -hmm. many identities, national, religious identities, identities of our cities. Somebody likes some sports, somebody likes something else. We are created by God to have many identity, but in the in the in the in the sense of the human, it's that we in the in the let's say in zero point we are human beings and we need to understand each other with all needs and all identities that have another, and to just to keep the golden rule. I always uh, this repeat to to, to 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 my colleagues in the cabinet. Uh, if you ask for some right giving to another, a right which you want for yourself giving to another. Mm -hmm. With that, it's very simple to, 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 to rule the country. 
If you asking, if we, I ask for some right, giving same right to another. Now, traditionally, one of the biggest markers of identity in the region and in Montenegro has been religion. And mm -hmm. you've actually had to confront, uh, as a politician, uh, the issue of the, of the Serbian Orthodox Church uh, in Montenegro. And you, you, you took a, a position, as far as I can make out, that was perhaps not predictable. Um, can you share with us a little bit what the issues were and why you took the decisions you did? Yes. Uh, I mentioned this uh, about corruption and organized crime like a biggest success of the, of the government. But personally, I'm talking, this is like for society, I think that is biggest biggest success. But personally, I am very proud because uh, I signed the uh, general contract or how we calling that basic agreement with the Serbian Orthodox Church because that was the problem for the decades in our country. Serbian Orthodox Church is the biggest religion group in Montenegro, but my understanding of that problem was not because they are the biggest religion group, but I come back to this point that everybody needs to have the equal rights. For me, it was unacceptable that somebody don't want to sign the general agreement with the Serbian Orthodox Church, and we have the agreements with the Catholic Church, mm -hmm. with the Muslim community, with the Jewish community. For me, this was unacceptable. Mm -hmm. And yes, they say, we will destroy your government, we will do this, we will do nobody do it this. Uh, you need to be very courage to, to make this. I was so dedicated to finish this, and I am very proud on this. I, I was so dedicated. And uh, I say it, and everybody was, my, what was my prediction was right, because they say that that is the political question, just for the understanding, we have two church, two Orthodox church there, and there is a lot of political question that uh, something will happen, people will be unsatisfied, we will have the conflicts, we will have the problems. I predict that we will not have any kind of problems, not any kind of conflicts, and after one month, Nobody will mention this anymore, this question. And everybody, what everybody was, my prediction, it's happened. Mm. Today, that is not more anymore the question. And the next prime minister will not have one huge problem on the table. Mm. I think that people in the Western Balkan are too preoccupied with the past. They don't want to understand that we cannot change the past. Only what we can change is the future. We should not talk too much about the past. And I think that everything what, what we, if always talking about something that we need to be dedicated to promote, the, to show the examples that we can go on. I have this question on the table when I come to the cabinet and I say, we will finish this. And they say, put the strong questions for the end of the mandate, because this is the modus operandi in the Balkanian country. And I say, no, give me most problematic thing in the beginning. Mm -hmm. I don't have time to talk about this anymore. Mm -hmm. And I think that I, I think that now everybody in Montenegro understands that I make the, 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 the right, right thing. And I think I speak with the Minister of Justice and say, look, give me just that this is the same, we're giving the same rights to all another religious group. He say this, give me, I want to sign this. Go to Patriarch, to Patriarch in Belgrade, and have very good conversation with them and say that we are ready in the moment and the church will be ready to, to, to sign an agreement. And we signed the, we signed the agreement and giving the big boost we're giving the boost. I think that this agreement in Montenegro have regional context. Why? First of all, because we show that we can do that something in very democratic way, in very, very, very good way. Second, we give the examples to all another, another countries which have similar problems, maybe with another religious organization to fix the problems. We have Bosnia and Herzegovina, they didn't make the, this with Islamic community. We have this in Kosovo, they have also problems. We give 
the example how we can fix the problem. I talk with my colleagues and I say, I give you the example how in the democratic way you can solve, you can solve some, 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 some problem. And to finish this historical question, it's a really big thing. The strange thing in all this, but strange, but positive thing is, which Patria underlined many times, is that they have the problem to come to disagreement with the people who are from Orthodox religion, and they didn't have the problem to come to, 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 to the solution with the, with the person who is from the Muslim, Muslim community. Mm -hmm. But I am also proud on that. I didn't make this because I think that uh, uh, we're giving more or, or less right to, to others. Our duty, our duty is to protect the right of every single religion person in Montenegro. This is, and this will be like a modus operandi also tomorrow with maybe some another religious community, coming people living in Montenegro from India, from, from, from China, from I don't know, from, from different parts of the, the world. Tomorrow we have very liberal law on, on religion freedom. Uh, five person can, can, can make the religious group in, in Montenegro. Everybody who asking for the rights have, the, have, have a possibility to, to do that. So uh, it was a lot of misunderstanding maybe about, about this in the beginning. Now, one year after, I think that everybody, including the most, most skeptic people in Montenegro, understand that uh, that, uh, that was the right decision. Don't, I am not looking on church, not in the, not another, another people who maybe are not religious people. I am not looking like an enemy. I am not, I am looking like in the persons and the people who have open concept of life. And if this is compatible with our, with our uh, legislation, with our, with our law, it's something which is more than, more than, more than uh, acceptable. So I think that we give the good, uh, um, good symbolic and, and, and uh, message to, to the region that uh, we need to finish some question from the, from, the, from the past in one very, very good and democratic way. So Prime Minister, I'm going to ask you one more question before we Please. turn over to the audience for your questions. Um, you are, of course, the author of this book, uh, which will be on sale afterwards and you're going to sign it, um, a critique of, of global ethics. Um, and I, I found myself thinking that's a really ambitious uh, book to write um, as, a, as a politician. Um, how, what motivated you to write this book? And are, are, don't, aren't you afraid that you might write things there that would later come back, as it were, to haunt you, that you'll be held to what you've written? Um, you know, I, like every person which, which have pressures on the different kind of way because of business, because of other things, uh, we are all looking for some protecting of our uh, mental hygiene. Mm. So reading the books and writing the books, I think that this part of the protecting of the mental hygiene from daily things what we are doing in, in politics. Uh, this book don't have nothing with the, with the local daily politics. It's uh, more my understanding of the, of the um, philosophy of globalization in context of ethics. I am pretty critical about uh, the current globalization to just to, to, to define myself, I am uh, for globalization, but globalization with more justice. So I am not anti-globalist. Mm -hmm. I think that the world is very small place and technology and everything development will make that more smaller, not more bigger, but more, more smaller. Mm -hmm. And I think that only thing what we can do is to manage the relation between different kind of nation, different kind of groups, different kind of people, individuals, and to promote in that more justice. So if somebody uh, like philosophy, I think that uh, this book uh, can, be, can be interesting. 
So it's not about the politics and about what, I, what I'm working every day. Mm -hmm. My wish, because politics is temporarily thing and it's, uh, it's very hard. It's very hard. Sometimes people think that it's easy to, to mm. do that. I think that it's very, very hard. My wishes, I don't know what, what will happen, it's to um, come back to university and to work with, uh, with, uh, with uh, young people in promotion of knowledge. Mm -hmm. I think that the knowledge is everything, it's light, it's something what make you to feel much more better, much more comfortable. Of course, we will not fix every problem, but uh, it's always good when we open some new windows uh, of, of of thinking of, of, of and of understanding um, something what is what is what is important for us. So, I finished this book uh, almost before. I come to, to, to the cabinet because now will be impossible to to, mm. <laughs> to, mm. to to finish. But I hope that this will not be my last book. I have one book from the beginning in 2010. I write the book Cosmopolitan just uh, Cosmopolitan Culture and Global Justice, and I'm talking about cosmopolitan theory. This is more critical, more critical. So I think I'm growing, understanding better the world. In the beginning was everything more idealistic. Now it's not too much, but uh, mm, I th it's, it's important to, to not, not live to that life of the ordinary politician, especially in the, in the countries and in the region when you don't have too much intellectual people in the politics. You have in the paper, but not really intellectual people. Thank you. Well, I have plenty more questions, but um, uh, you've already given us a great deal of food for thought. I'm now going to take questions from here. If you could give your name and your affiliation, if you have one, that would be helpful. Sir. Uh, hello, Professor Kaminsky, Dutch Business School, St. Edmund's College. Uh, the Prime Minister, many thanks for coming to Cambridge, and many thanks to the Centre and the New Union for organising this uh, event. Uh, Mr. Prime Minister, I wanted to ask you to elaborate on the EU integration and uh, the main obstacles in this regard. Uh, is the nature more uh, content related or actually politics related? Because we know uh, some statements, or for, for, some, uh, for example, French or German uh, politicians uh, who are more, let's say, uh, enlargement skeptic. Uh, but on the other hand, uh, I think that Montenegro can, uh, can rely on Central European countries where there is uh, political consensus in this regard. And just briefly, uh, if you could uh, also uh, talk a little bit uh, about uh, the war in Ukraine and, uh, uh, and Balkan region in this regard. Uh, mm -hmm. Is it possible to, for the West to create some offer to Serbia to uh, uh, to, to encourage the Serbia to, to, to uh, break relationships uh, with Russia. Thank, thank you very much. Uh, so about the first question, EU integration, I think that if this country which is perfect to uh, relive the enlargement process, that is Montenegro. But when I say that uh, there is the two-way street, uh, also, EU should stay attractive. EU lose one member when UK decide to, 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 to leave. And from that period, they don't have the new members. So, after the war in Ukraine, I think that everybody understands that uh, it's the new geopolitical moment. Montenegro have two or three questions which are which are not so hard to, 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 to solve, but we will see. Some of the questions are, are connected with judiciary system when we need the, a little bit bigger consensus. So we need to have the more stable government and more to create one two third majority in the parliament to change some, some laws and to elect some judges. This is something what is the, what is, what, what, what is the problem. But I want to underline that uh, now we have from EU different kind of the theories how they can make system more, more effective because it's true that it's not so effective. 
I like the idea, which is promoted by the President Charles Michel, uh, President of European Council, that uh, countries who have the candidate status should sit on the table, not for making a decision, but for the shaping of decision. Because some time by time, you have the countries which don't understand what's happened in the region. You have some countries which are really big supporter of the, of the region or on the enlargement, like in Austria, Italy, Slovenia and others. But you have the countries which are, you know, they don't have priority Western Balkan. So just sitting on the table and explaining, doesn't matter that you don't have the right to vote, explaining your own problem, making a connection. Uh, when, we, when we have the communication, we building the trust. I think that that can be productive. This is what, what I think can happen in the short period of time. For some, let's say, middle or long terms, I think that they should decide are they want to be open for the, for the new countries or not. I hope yes. I hope yes. And I think that Montenegro can use this, this, this opportunity. When you ask me about the situation uh, in, in, in Serbia and in, in the region in context of the Ukrainian war, uh, in England have the good, good, uh, good words about that, that we should go in the shoes of another's. And I think that we should look at that from another perspective. It's easy to criticize, it's easy to, 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 to say that they don't want to join sanction or this or that, but the uh, environment, social environment in the country, it's a little bit different from, from, from another's. And I think that in that way, we need to just uh, uh, have the more understanding for the, for the, for the current, current, current policy and don't make more problems that we have. This is. In Montenegro, it's different. It's, it's different. We are 100% compatible with EU foreign policy, following sanction in every package of sanction. It, it's following. This is, it was not easy also for us. We are a country who is a lot of depend from the tourism. And 20% of all markets was from Russia Federation. And we in one moment cut all this relation and come to zero, have the new promotion, a new destination, making a good thing from my, from my point of view. We are not dependent anymore. And uh, this, this, this is good. But uh, for the Western Balkan, we need more understanding. And I always, uh, in direct contacts with my colleagues from the region saying, uh, sit together, talk, maybe about some topics which are not direct uh, connected with the, with the politics, but build the trust, build the trust. And I hope that in one day we will have one common voice for, 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 for something good. I am optimistic about that. I will not be in the politics if I don't believe that all our regions can change in some, let's say, Positive, positive way. Thank you. The lady in yellow. Yes, please. Mm -hmm. Hello, my name is Ksenia Belagan. I'm actually from Montenegro, so I hope you allow me to greet Mr. Belagan. Mm -hmm. Dobar dan. 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 Dobar Thank you, Xenia. So, first of all, for me, it's a great pleasure to see that Montenegrin students are here. I also met uh, Philip, and I think that uh, after you get uh, enough knowledge, you will come to apply in, 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 in Montenegro. Um, you are right. I will just say the, some, some facts. It's important uh, that uh, by one research, 70% of the young people uh, thinking about leaving of country when they finish the studies or before they 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 starting to study 70 percent so it's the it's a huge percentage one another research which was in croatia i think that is uh, very similar to, to montenegro we didn't make this but i think that is similar they asked the young people why they want to leave the country first reason it's always the same the reason is economic reason so that is the reason for many years, for the decades, people for economic reason want to go in some, somewhere else. Second, second, it's corruption. 
But how is interpret? I interpret it another way. I think this corruption is injustice system which is created in injustice way. So to don't give the somebody who have the better education, don't give the better position because they are members of some party or something like that. They see that people who are not so credible have the, some very responsible position in the country. Things, I think, this make the demotivation of the of the people. Uh, from my point of view, almost the same like economical reason. Almost the same like economical reason. And it's the third category. Third category are the people who want to see something new, who have some uh, adventure spirit, which I, I also have. I like it, people who, who decide to, to, to get an education outside. I think this is very, very important for the country. So a lot of people in the Montenegro, because they didn't have possibility to go nowhere in the life because of that, we think that we are the center of the world. And it's not like that. So when you go somewhere else, see another cultures, uh, learn another language, um, meet with another people, another culture, everything, you changing your, 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 your understanding of, of, of life. And I think that uh, that is not a bad thing. So people who are living for that reason, like you, like not, not living, but come here, make education. Philip maybe will work. He, he told me that he will work in the London when he finished the, the, the school. It's good, but we need, government need to, and uh, we are unsuccessful until now on that, to make the, some base, database of our people who are outside, who are very professional in different sectors and who want to support the country, to help the country, who are the good in medicine, who are good in science, who are good in economy. I don't know who can be important for investment, for, for another thing. I think that this should be the, 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 the focus of the, of the, of the uh, working with the, with the people who are outside. And for the motivation inside of country, we need to build a more justice system. And of course, what we starting to do is to promote the better, better economical conditions, so better uh, living standard if we want to keep the people there. From my point of view, this is internal question, but you know the, the, the Montenegro. Um, I have the focus in the north of the country. I think that the center and, and the, and the uh, south area don't have the problem. People can live not because of economical aspect or because they cannot find a job, because they can find a job. But north of the country, it's uh, always something what, uh, what, what make me to, to, to be concerned because uh, people there, especially young people, still don't see the, 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 the progress. And I think that we will need to have some big infrastructure project to, to keep one part of population there. Next question. Yes, at the back, please. Oh. Yes. Oh. I Thank, Thank you very much. I am very surprised with the comment. So I and I appreciate. Thank you very much. I see a number of hands up. First, the gentleman here in the front. Yes. Thank you, Prime Minister. We really appreciate you coming here and representing our country. It's a great pleasure to see you here and fun of what's of the double dash of capital. We all know that institutions are really important in both establishing a well-functioning democratic system 
but also in empowering a functioning and a growing economy. And given the context, not only in Montenegro, but also in the wider Balkan area of corruption and general mistrust, how do you think we can participate and how do you think as you, the government, can help build institutional capacities which can, first of all, build trust between the institutions, so there's more growth within, but also between the citizens themselves. Because me personally, as a citizen, the way I want to contribute to the economy is through entrepreneurship. And without stable and functioning institutions, that is very difficult for me. So that's all I have. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for the question. You are right. So everybody who wants to make the fair business and in mm, Sustainable business want to have the predictable environment. This is, and uh, this is connected with uh, this, uh, what I mentioned before, uh, fighting against corruption, giving the possibility to the people who really have the knowledge. But I want to, to underline what uh, uh, one issue, one challenge, which, which I recognize in this my two positions, Deputy Prime Minister and Prime Minister. I think that in Montenegro, I don't know how it's in other countries, I think it's the same in another country in the region. The key problem is that people, people in public administration don't make decision. They don't make decision at all. I never saw this in my life. So they are responsible for, they don't make decision. One part, maybe they are afraid. Another part, they don't know how to apply that. One part, maybe it's not interest for that. You have the people, and I asking the people from the public administration, why you don't give the uh, construction permission to, 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 to this hotel? Is everything by the law? Yes. Did you check this? Yes, I checked many times. But why you don't give it? Nobody told me. So I think that people should uh, know that if they work something, they have over responsibility, and it's much better, it's much better, I think, and more productive to make the mistake than to don't make decisions. So if you wait, make 100 decisions, maybe you will make two mistakes or three mistakes, but in 97, 97 decisions, you, you will push the system to work. If you don't make decision, 100 application waiting. And I think that this is the, the key thing. So we need to encourage, it's not easy, to encourage the people who are working in public administration to make the decision. Mm -hmm. To respect the law, of course, but to make the, to make the decision. With that, we can make more, more predictable, predictable system. But to, to just to, 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 to say this, I am so optimistic about Montenegro. If we have political stability, I don't know what will be with the politics, we never know. I think that until 2030, we can have the standards like some countries in EU. I really believe. But we need to, 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 to change our mindset about two or three things. First, we need to promote really open society really open society, to don't be afraid. You know, small countries are afraid. They don't believe that they can make some success. First, we need to promote the open society. Second, second, we need to give the possibility to the people who want to invest in the good project, much less bureaucracy. Less bureaucracy, this is. And the third, we need to see how we can fix the problem with uh, citizenship. Why am I saying citizenship? Because without people, there is no progress. You know, we are very restrictive in our, in our citizenship because country is too small. But without people, you can not have the progress. Why London is it's so, so, so developed? Because London 50 years ago have maybe, I don't know, I'm saying approximately two, three million people now have 10, 50 million people. This is why our capital, it's, it's, it's growing, because people coming to live there. 
Why north? It's, it's in negative because people living. So without people, we cannot make the, we cannot make the, 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 the progress. I'm not saying that we will have a lot of people, but I want to share you, I have the possibility to talk uh, last summer with uh, uh, Mohammed bin Salman, you know who is Mohammed bin Salman, he is the uh, Crown Prince of Saudi Arabia. And he talks with the Prime Ministers of the Western Balkan in one, one lunch. And we talk about everything, about uh, Newcastle, about the, the um, coming in that time World Cup, coming that time World Cup, development, everything. And he told me in one moment, look, I think that Saudi Arabia have now 30 million of people. If we want to be, well, our wish is to be the superpower in everything, in transport, in energy, in tourism, in this and that. They make a lot of pro pro projects, have a lot of money and make a lot of projects. And he say, if we want to come to our goals, we cannot do that with the 30 millions of people. We need 50 millions of people. Our goal is until 2050 to have 50 millions of people. And I say, how you can do that? People will come to work to us for many reasons. Because if we don't have enough people, we will not have the high level education, not even healthcare system, not an another things. Because for this, you need the people. I don't think that Montenegro need to have millions of people. And I don't, don't think that that will happen. We are unique. We need to be like a unique destination. But we need to be the place when people want to come to live and to work. Without that, I don't see the, the progress. But I'm staying optimistic. And I think that we can make the very huge step forward. Thank you. Now, we only have a few minutes left. So what I'm going to do is take the last questions together. Mm -hmm. Gentleman here in the, uh, on the left. Yes, please. Uh, good afternoon, Mr. Prime Minister. Uh, My name is Moon. I'm a new student here uh, with the Defense School. So uh, I'm from Canada, so I'd like to bring the Arctic slope subject there, the global slope. Uh, I wonder what is your view on the kind of increasing geopolitical uh, tension between Canada, US, and Europe? And uh, kind of following up on that, from Montenegro's perspective, what would you respond, I guess, diplomatic policy in terms of trade and also? And then the lady on the right here will ask the last question, and then we'll take the two together. Okay. Yes. Please. Okay. Yes. yes. Okay. Hello. Thank you very much for joining me. I'm a Slovak. I'm a physicist at Canada Bishop Laboratory. So I'm not a politician, and I wanted to ask about the energy sector. Like, what is the main source of electric energy right now in Montenegro, and what are your plans about that? Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, first, uh, to our friend from China. So, uh, we, like a small country, have very, very easy principles. We want to have the friendship with every single country in the world. And everybody who wants to make the fair business is more than welcome. We know our foreign policy goals. Our foreign policy goals, first, we finished to be in full membership of NATO. Second, which is ongoing, to be in full membership of EU, to be part of EU. This is. So, in that context, it's not up to us to discuss the big geopolitical questions. I personally don't like what's happened in geopolitics right now. I don't like. But who cares what Prime Minister of Montenegro think about the relation between US and China or, or Russia and China or I don't. It, 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 it's, 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 it's okay. I just want to say that it's a lot of lot of uh, rhetorics which you know influence of china this and that and also china make the biggest infrastructure project in montenegro highway which is very expensive one of the most expensive highways in the world 27 million euros for kilometer for me really unrational i like that my country have the highway but from my point of view, in the context of economy, it's, it's, it's not so rational. But I am not saying that that is because of China makes something bad. I think that our authorities didn't make the good calculation. Because you can offer whatever you want. It's up to people who decide to use the state budget and, and money of every citizen to use it in the right way. So if you can say, I want to sell this pen to you $100 or 100 pounds, 
and I know that the price is one pound, it's not, I cannot say that you make a mistake if I buy that. So this create a lot of, lot of problems in the context of image of the, of the country, relation with China, but uh, we now don't have the, this kind of problems and I hope that uh, also during this summer, China's tourists finally will come back to Montenegro because China was closed for the three years because of Corona. In 2019, we have a lot of China's tourists. So I am now giving the best, like all government, to bring the people back. And I think that we will come, 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 come to that. These big geopolitical stories, we want to stay out of this. But in the context of principles, we are... Uh, together with our with our uh, alias in NATO and in EU, and we are very respectable uh, partner in every single single sense. So we want to respect the rule. If you want to be part of one club, respect the rule. It's same in Cambridge. It's same everywhere. If you don't want, okay, you can you can leave. But we want to respect the rules and to be the credible partners of our our our, our alias. This is everybody else are more than, more than welcome to make the fair business in, in our country. In the uh, context of energy, uh, Montenegro, um, by European Energy Committee, last year was uh, elected like the country which managed the energy crisis best in Europe. Is true. There are some factors. First, because we are not part of the of the of the gas network, we are not using the gas. So this negative impact of gas was not so visible in Montenegro, just in the context of the of the price of electricity. But we are one of the few countries in the Europe which not increased the the price of electricity last three years. In end of the when everybody have the problem with the energy, we. Uh, make situation that uh, in the 1st of March we have 100 million euros plus. We are positive because we make the export. Only one period in August last year was problematic for us. But I am not satisfied with that because like a green destination we need immediately to start to promote the green projects. And we will have a lot of, after the summer starting of Many, I think seven in the, in the beginning, uh, making the solar plants and wind farms, so everything in re renewable. We don't want to make the hydro now because we want to, 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 to protect our, our, our rivers. And I think that Montenegro can be the country which uh, don't have any problem with the energy for, the, for, for, for some period of time. Why I think that it's important to promote these solar plants? Because most of our cities, 70% of our cities, have more than 250 sunny days. And they still don't use that. Our problem is only in the summer, which was from my point of view when I started to talk with the, with the authorities in, in this energy sector, I saying, I cannot believe that last 30 years after democracy come in some, some, some shape, I don't know, uh, nobody understand that we have the problem during the summer when we have the so much sunny days, it's very warm, and nobody come to the situation to, to, to make the project. So we make the, the, our rules very simple for the, for the starting with the solar plants, and I truly believe that in this context of energy, we will not have the problem. One another thing for, for the for like last, it's... Uh, we want diversification also on that, and in port of the bar, it's idea which we're going on. This is idea of, of, of my government to build the LNG terminal. En energy, big energy, LNG terminal, which will be like a storage for the region. Because nobody in Montenegro looks like a market. It's, it's a small country to look like a market. But if you look the Western Balkan countries, so 50, 20 million of euros, that is, that is something sustainable. We have one main port and we are in the, in the negotiation with the American company to, big the, uh, to make the very big LNG terminal that. So that will be this diversification also not to have this 
electricity cost, but finally to have also the gas in, in, in the country. Prime Minister, there are many questions. We could continue talking at great length, um, but much. if we did that, we wouldn't give the audience the opportunity to savour your book, which I think they will be able to do uh, in a minute. Um, so it really just remains for me uh, to say thank you for an extremely wide-ranging discussion, which you shared many perspectives, uh, but also an outlook on the future. Um, and to express that thanks on my own personal behalf, on behalf of the union, and of you, the audience, we're most grateful. Thank you. Thank you very much.